we are going to do one more example of a recurrence that we will try to solve using the substitution method where a straightforward approach won't lead to the proof being successful and we may again have to add or subtract a lower order term in order to push through the inductive proof. So here's the recurrence. T of n is given to be 4 times T of n by 2 plus n. This is for n greater than 1. And let's assume that T of 1 is given to be equal to 1. So this is the base case of this recurrence. Now, in order to use the substitution method, we need to first make a reasonable guess about what the asymptotic complexity of T of n could be and then try to prove it using induction. It turns out that this recurrence can be directly solved using master theorem because it's of the form T of n is a times T of n by b plus f of n. So let's use the master theorem to directly solve this recurrence and we will use the solution then as a guess to apply the substitution method on. So you may wonder why go through this whole exercise of proving using the substitution method something that we can directly prove using master theorem. And the idea here is again to practice the substitution method, uh, especially an ex one more example of how a straightforward inductive proof may not may not be successful and how one may have to again subtract or add a lower order term to make the proof successful. Okay, so let's use master theorem to solve this recurrence. A here is 4, B here is 2 and f of n is n. So if we compute n to the power log base b of a, we get n to the power log base 2 of 4, which is n square. And if we compare n square or n to the power log base b of a with f of n, we see that n to the power log base b of a is polynomially larger than f of n. This means that we are in case 1 of master theorem. So case 1 of master theorem tells us that in such a scenario, the solution to the recurrence is given by theta of n to the power log base b of a. So t of n is theta of n square. Now we are going to use this as the guess to prove the substitution method. And our proof is going to is going to prove that t of n is theta of n square by proving the upper bound and the lower bound separately. So in the first part of the proof, we will prove that t of n is in big O of n square. Then in the second part of the proof, we will prove that t of n is in big omega of n square. So let's first focus on proving that t of n is in big O of n square which is the upper bound on t of n. More specifically, we want to prove by induction that there exists a constant c that's positive such that for all large enough values of n larger than some threshold value n0, t of n can be bounded from above by this constant multiple of n square. This follows directly from the definition of the big O notation. And this underlined portion is what we are going to formally prove using induction. So the base case of the induction has, has us testing whether the claim is true at n equal to 1. So at n equal to 1, let's see whether t of 1 is less than or equal to c times 1 square. 
we know that t of 1 is equal to 1 and c times 1 square is nothing but c. So is 1 less than or equal to c times 1 square? This will be true if the constant c is chosen to be greater than or equal to 1. So assuming that this constraint is satisfied, we have proven the base case, that is we have proven this claim is true at n equal to 1. Let's not worry about proving the claim for n equal to 2, 3 and so on, unless we specifically feel that proving an additional number of base cases is necessary. So let's move to the induction hypothesis. Our induction hypothesis says that for all values less than n, so our induction hypothesis is going to claim that this claim is true, t of k is less than or equal to c times k square for all values of k less than n, that is varying from 1, which is our base case, up to n minus 1. For all these n minus 1 values of k, t of k is less than or equal to c times k square for some positive constant c. And of course, this c needs to be greater than or equal to uh, 1 as well for the base case to be satisfied. But we can uh, aggregate all those constraints at the very end. Right now, let's just assume that this claim is true for some positive constant c. In the induction step, we need to prove that the claim applies even at n. So assuming that it applies for all values of k less than n, we need to prove that it also holds true at n. That is, t of n is less than or equal to c times n squared. So how do we try to prove this? Well, let's take the left hand side here, which is t of n, and we know from the definition of the recurrence that t of n is 4 times t of n by 2 plus n. Now since we have a smaller argument over here, we can apply the induction hypothesis on t of n by 2. Assuming that, assuming that n by 2 is falling into this range from 1 to n minus 1. Assuming that n by 2 falls into this range, we can use the induction hypothesis and say that t of n by 2 is less than or equal to c times n by 2 squared. Right? We just have to substitute k equal to n by 2 in this inequality. And how do we know that this, this induction hypothesis applies at n by 2. We are assuming here that the value of n by 2 is greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to n minus 1. That is, it's falling into this range, which it will if n is greater than or equal to 2. Right? So this left inequality will be true if n is greater than or equal to 2. And this right inequality will also be true if n is greater than or equal to 2. If you multiply uh, 2 on both sides, you get n is less than or equal to 2n minus 2. So you can simplify that and you will get n is greater than or equal to 2. So both these inequalities hold if n is greater than or equal to 2. That is, if n is greater than or equal to 2, we can, up, we can use the induction hypothesis on this smaller problem. So, we can use the induction hypothesis on t of n by 2 if n is greater than or equal to 2. So, we don't have to prove any additional base cases beyond n equal to 1 because for n greater than or equal to 2, we are going to assume that uh, t of n by 2 will automatically be satisfying the induction hypothesis. So, substituting c times n by 2 square in place of t of n by 2, we will get something larger. If I substitute this term by the right hand side of this inequality, I will be increasing the value of this whole expression 
and so t of n will be less than or equal to the resulting expression. The resulting expression will be 4 times c multiplied by n by 2 square plus n. This simplifies to cn square plus n. Now we wanted to prove that t of n is less than or equal to c times n square but we have ended up with c n square plus n on the right hand side. So if we are given that t of n is less than or equal to c n square plus n, does this imply that t of n is less than or equal to c times n square? Well, not necessarily. So we have failed to prove what we wanted to prove. This could be because the claim actually is not true or it could be because it, or it could be, be just because we didn't choose an induction hypothesis that was strong enough. So let's try subtracting a lower order term from the right hand side and modifying the original claim and then try to prove the modified claim.